Okay, today I'm going to demonstrate installing Debian Linux on a server. Uh, this is very similar to how we have set up uh, Linux-based servers for the like, Cumberland District Health Department and also for some other organizations that I've helped uh, set up servers with. Um, the process is fairly straightforward. I'll be demonstrating the process of setting up a RAID uh, for redundancy with the disks. I'll also demonstrate uh, setting up LVM to make uh, volume management easier for future expansion. Uh, today's demonstration, I am going to be using a virtual machine, but I'm going to demonstrate all the steps that you would uh, use uh, to set up a physical machine, a physical server, um, and to, I'll have some sub subsequent videos in this process that will uh, demonstrate setting up various services such as shorewall, firewalls, Samba, file servers, etc. <clears throat> so, uh, like I said, for this demonstration I'm going to be using a virtual machine, but this is the same process that you would use to set this up on a physical server. Um, so I've downloaded the Debian uh, net install disk. This is Debian 9.5. Just the real small uh, net install ISO image. You can burn that onto a CD or you can use something like the Win32 disk imager to uh, create a USB uh, drive, <coughs> excuse me, with the same image. Um, so uh, for our setup today, we're going to assume we have a bare bones system with two uh, SATA hard drives or, or um, SAS hard drives and um, two NICs, although that wouldn't be necessary for this uh, video, but uh, the two hard drives we're going to set up into a mirrored RAID array. So I've booted now to the uh, net install image and uh, as you can see uh, we've got our options here we'll go ahead and take the graphical and Okay, so I've cut the video a little bit, as you can see, uh, to get past a lot of that waiting, but this is the next screen we come to, and we can see the two Ethernet devices. So we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can get an IP address there on that first device. All right. And here we're going to actually set up our, our host name. So uh, assuming we're going to set this up like as a gateway router, we'll just call this uh, gateway. And uh, for our domain name, we'll just uh, go ahead and give it the health department domain name. And we'll go ahead and continue. And of course, at this point, we're going to set up a password. Um, don't do this in real life, but we'll go ahead and give it a root password. Uh, root. In real life, you would want to choose a very good password there. And uh, in this case, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, new user, we're going to call this one. Again, you would use your real name or the name of uh, an IT staff there or a generic name there um, and again using a good password but in this case we're simply not going to worry about what the password is and just use the password of user for this user. Okay we'll go ahead and accept the time zone. I am in Eastern Time so that's fine. Okay, at this point it's asking us how do we want to set up the disks. So, um, like I said, if this was actually a virtual machine that you were setting up, uh, we would go ahead and just use the guided use entire disk option here and go through without any LVM or RAID setup. But in our case, um, I'm demonstrating how to set this up on physical hardware and we would like some RAID uh, configuration for redundancy and also LVM. 
So I'm going to choose the option here to go back and uh, this will take us back to a menu. Okay, and one of the options down here in this menu is to simply execute a shell. So we're going to take that option, continue. Okay, so now we have a BusyBox shell uh, in the installer environment. So now I can simply do fdisk, and we're going to partition our uh, dev SDA, which is the first uh, physical device connected to the machine. Okay, there we have it. I can press P to print out the existing partition table, which it looks like there's not anything there. So I'm going to use the letter G now to create a new GUID partition table. All right, then we're going to use the letter N to create a new partition in this table, in this partition table. Uh, we'll accept the default. Uh, we're just going to make a very small partition um, starting at the uh, 1 megabyte mark, 2048, and going up to, say, 4095, 4095, which will give us basically a 1 megabyte partition. This is going to be for our BIOS boot partition to allow the system to actually boot. All right. Now we're going to use the T to toggle to change the type of that partition. T. Um, in this case, we will just simply select type 4 for the BIOS boot partition. And if I use P to print out, you can see now that there's that one megabyte partition there on the screen. Alright, so we'll use N to make another partition, and this time we'll go ahead and take partition 2, take the default first sector, and we'll go ahead and use the rest of the disk. So just uh, take the defaults here, print, and uh, there you have it. Uh, in this case, my virtual disk is about 30 gigabytes, so you can see that there on the screen. That would be the entirety of the remainder of your drive, whatever drive you have in there. So. I'm going to use the letter W, to, if we like this, to write and exit the program. Okay, so now we have partitioned uh, dev SDA, which is the first disk. Now we'll do fdisk again for dev SDB. Go through the same process. Create a good partition table. Create a new partition. Partition 1. Accept the default first sector. Last sector is 4095. And then we're going to toggle the type of that, type 4. All right, print. Now yeah, make sure that's right. Okay, make another new partition, partition 2, default first and last sectors. And there we have it. So now I'm going to write that to the disk. So now I have uh, two drives with an identical partition table. Uh, the first partition is a very small partition for booting, and the remainder is a fairly large partition that we can use as the base for our RAID device. Now we'll go ahead and use the command mdadm to go ahead and create that RAID device. mdadm dash dash create dash dash level one dash dash metadata 0 0.90 dash dash RAID devices two give it the excuse me, the RAID device name itself, dev md0, then we're going to tell it what uh, physical devices to use to back that array, which is going to be dev sda2 and dev sdb2. Press enter, and there you have it. The uh, array is created. I can actually see that if I cat proc slash md stat, and there it is, and you can see that it's actually resyncing as we speak. Now on top of that RAID device, uh, we can create what's called logical volumes. So the first step is to create the physical device. So PV create dev mb0, that creates a physical device for LVM out of that newly created RAID device. We're just stacking uh, these logical devices one on top of the other um, until we get a system that is abstracted enough we can manipulate things in quite a lot of ways. Um, so PV create. Now we have a new physical volume. Now we'll actually create the volume group now that we have a place to store it. VG create will just be uh, rather un unoriginal and call it VG1. And then 
we'll use the physical device dev md0, which we've just uh, formatted. So, there you have it. Now, if I do vg display, you will be able to see on the screen that volume group. You can see it has 30 gigabytes in it. All of the uh, space is free for the most part. Um, now we can create logical volumes in it. I'll be create. Uh, where's the target volume group? VG1 dash dash name root. This is going to be for our root file system. Dash dash size. Um, in this case, we'll just say 20 gigs. That's good enough for our example. Um, you'll see in your documentation probably should be a little bigger than that. Um, you decide based on how much space you have on your volume groups and how much you software you intend to install on the server. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create that logical volume. There it is. Then we'll LV create again. This time for our swap and size, and we'll just say 8 gigs. All right, if we do LVS, that's going to actually list out all of those uh, logical volumes for us. And at this point, we are ready to go ahead and install the system. So we will exit out of this. All right, now it remembers where we were. We were at the partition disk step. So we'll continue. And it's going to load the partitioner, and it's going to scan and see all of the changes that we have actually made to those disks. Okay, in this screen, we actually need to go down and, and uh, tell it what do we want to use these different logical volumes for. So in this case, you see this is LV root. This We just created this with the intention of uh, placing the root file system on here. So we need to tell the installer our, our intentions. So I'm going to go down here and press Enter. And it says use as, do not use. Well, we actually want to use this as an ext4 journaling file system, select that. Then mount point is going to be slash root, root file system. And we are done setting up this partition. Now we'll go ahead and tell it we want to use this swap space too, and use as swap area and done setting up the partition. <coughs> so just to review what we've done uh, just from the very beginning um, we have here we have two uh, physical hard drives they're about 32 gigs each uh, on those drives we have uh, two partitions each there's the first partition which is our BIOS grub partition and the second partition you can see that on um, both drives there. Uh, those have been uh, bonded together in a software RAID device, which we have here. That is actually being used to back our volume group in LVM here. So we're not using any of these directly through the installer. We're only using these two logical volumes that were created here. So we've just told the installer to use this particular logical volume for root and this smaller one for swap. So we will say, uh, go down here, finish partitioning, continue. Okay, it's giving us a review of what we wanted to do. We're going to format these two logical volumes, and yes, and continue. Okay, we'll go ahead and let this install. I'll cut the video here um, and come back in, in a minute. Okay, the base install has completed and it's come up asking us do we want to scan another CD. Uh, in this case, well, we're just going to say no and continue. And we'll go ahead and click through the rest of this setup. And it's going to go online. Of course, we're just going to take no proxy and it's going to go online 
and look for packages available on the internet. Still going. Looks like it's installing the Linux kernel. It may be taking a little longer because of the slow uh, hardware that I'm doing this video on. But hopefully it won't take too long in your uh, fast new server that you're building. Okay, so now it's actually asking us some more questions. Do we want to participate in a popularity contest? Uh, that's fine either way. Um, let it configure that. Okay, finally we got to this screen that I was expecting uh, where we can select the software we want to install. Since so this is going to be a server, we don't really need any desktop environment. Um, we don't even need a print server. We can install a web server later, but I do like to go ahead and install the SSH server and standard system utilities, and we'll go ahead and continue. And that's going to take a while. All right, so it looks like the install has finished and it's asking to install Grub bootloader now on the hard disk. And of course we do want to do that. Yes, uh, otherwise the system won't boot. And we'll go ahead and install that on the first uh, drive. We'll come back later and actually install it on both drives. In case one drive were to fail, the system would still be able to boot from the second drive. All right, we get to this point and we are ready to reboot. And we'll let this go. And there it is. Booting up to the new system. We'll go ahead and log in. Root. Root. And there we have it. And I'll, we'll go ahead and, and clean up a few little items here. We're going to go ahead and, like I said a minute ago, make sure that we've installed uh, Grub on both uh, hard, hard disks. In case one were to fail, it would be able to boot from the second one. So dpackage-reconfigure, Grub-pc, and it's going to bring us up to the little blue screen. We're going to take the defaults, defaults, and uh, OK. Now we're going to choose both SDA and SDB here. Notice they're both highlighted. We use the space bar to put that little asterisk there. Tab to OK. And let it install. All right, there it is. Next, we're going to go ahead and install some important software we'll need on a lot of servers. Apt install. Shore wall, rsync, and sudo. Okay, accept that. It's going ahead and installing those. All right, and we're going to go ahead in one more step and give our local user uh, pseudo privileges so they can become root. So user mod dash a capital G pseudo, and our user is just called user. Uh, this would be your real username here. So there you have it. Now if I log out as root, log back in as user, and user. Now, if I do sudo dash i, now I give it the password, user, and now I have root access from my user account. So, there you have it. Installing and configuring the base uh, system. Uh, come back uh, in a few minutes to our next video, and we'll go through setting up SSH access.